Lounge and Sun. All right, All right, welcome back to another episode of the Comic Lounge Podcast, guys. I am your host, the unstoppable Dillbot, and with me, as always, the sensational Spider Rye. I like that one. That's a good one. That's, good. Uh, that's a good one. That's a good Spider Rye. Okay, well, welcome back to the book club. This week, we are showcasing Stillwater by the ever so lovable, ever so huggable Chip Zdarsky, uh, Ramon and Ramon K. Perez uh, from Image Mike Comics. Spicer. And Mike yeah. Spicer's. And Mike Spicer. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Let's yeah. go, so, Ryan. Since I mean, I'm already, I've already, I'm, I'm kind of caught. I think I'm two issues behind. I think, I, I think where I stopped is where the actual trade stopped. I think uh, issue number eight came out either last week or comes out this week. No, it came and, out last week, you're right? Yeah. Well, as of when we're recording. As of when we're recording. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was last week. And yeah, I'm just two issues behind. So like, let, I, I, Ryan, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let's go. Yeah. Um. I liked the first issue when it came out, you know what I mean? And I don't know why I took it off my pull. There was really no reason for it. I don't know. You know, Other sometimes than you, you probably just... had like 46 comics on your pull? Yeah, right now I'm at 54. So, yeah. um, <laughs> well, that's including – it's it's hard because like I have – hold on. Let me explain myself. But you quick. spread yourself out though. Like, well, there's also, there's also mini series. There's stuff that's on the list that hasn't even started yet. Um, a couple things are about to drop off, right? So, like, there's one issue left, or there's a one shot, or an annual. So, like, that's how the pull looks for me. You know what I mean? Like, if I look at the exact number, it'll show everything, even if it's only an annual. So, there's a lot of stuff that's about to fall off. But anyways, um, still water was just something where I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for the trade. And I could have read the PDFs. We get them every week, right? But like, you know me, I will not read a PDF unless it's absolutely fucking necessary. But I love the first issue. I liked it better this time. The first issue, I mean. Like, even the first issue was better on the second read. And I'm kind of upset with myself now that I didn't get the the single issues. This is one of those those uh, instances where I'm mad at myself. Because mm-hmm. it is a really great book. Chip Zdarsky is just... Uh, it's great. He's, he's, he's like... I would say there's... I, I'm going to say there's ten writers. Ten writers that are currently writing comic books. Mm. that if I see their name, I'll buy the book. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I'll at least pick up the first issue doing the stuff he's doing at Marvel. Phenomenal. All his indie mm-hmm. stuff. And he's a fucking talented artist, too. Like, he just did Six Criminals that ended with Matt Fraction, finally. That ended last year, or mm-hmm. I believe, like, a year ago. But this town, so Stillwater, is that it's a people can't die. Like, you could literally have somebody put a shotgun into your mouth and blow your head off. And it will grow back. Now, yeah, when 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 they got into like the this thing when they're like, well, wouldn't you know, the foot just grew back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, I just laughed, dude. You know, it's it's really funny, but like the whole point of this, like for the first issue, is all the setup of why we're even in this town. You know, like it's not it's not like we're in the town from the beginning. No, this guy. It's either, right, Daniel, it's either Danny, Daniel West, Danny or Daniel Tommy. West. So it's Daniel West, which. Um, is not even his real name because he finds that he's adopted. It gets a letter telling him to go to this town. So he brings his buddy with him. Um, and this dude's got like, he's got a little bit of a temper. I think he gets fired in the first issue. So I can relate. I have a big mouth and I've gotten fired for having a big mouth. So I, I like him. I like the character himself and I liked him. I remember wh- how, why I liked him the first time and I liked him even more going forward. And he get you know, as he goes to this town, um, that's where the mystery deepens. The mystery of the town is, it's almost secondary as you get through the first, through the first arc, first six issues. Yeah. Because, like, I thought it was going to be more about the mystery of the town when I read the first issue whenever it came out, like, a, a year ago. But it's not. It's about, like, the people in the town and the, and the judge is a piece of shit. Like, he's basically... So, like, you find out more about the mystery of the town, right? Like, nobody knows how it happened, but they keep just... it a secret from the world. You can't leave. You have to stay there. I think a couple people are allowed to go out for whatever reason, but we still haven't completely learned why, And uh, except for one guy. The way we even learned that people can't die is that kid fucking falls off the roof. Yeah. That's just look, wild. He looks mangled. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. his bones are all fucked up. And then... He's still alive. So Daniel's like, what the fuck? They try to leave. And his friend gets killed. 
and then he learns the history like his mom like the whole thing with his mom was really interesting uh you know the fact that and and i i that's what i found the most interesting right is like the reason why she sends him out because like these kids like nobody ages so his mom is still the same age that from when he was like basically when he was a toddler two years old and it was cool because like he was not physically aging but his mental was aging so you had like this little two-year-old, it looks like a two-year-old, talking like an older kid. Yeah. And, like, to Full me, Full-on that's, sentences. That's creepy that's, as fuck. Yeah, it's creepy. It, 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 like, even looking at it tripped me out. Um, yeah. So, like, I, and then, but, like, within the city or within the town, you know, there's this whole, like, um, rebellion going on. And, dude, I fucking, first of all, Zdarsky is, like I said, like, his writing is so good. And everything he writes is phenomenal. His Daredevil, great. You know what I mean? His Spider-Man, Spider-Shadow, great. There's a reason why I want him to take over Spider-Man. And, you know, I, I think it's even funny. I think he's writing an issue of Crossover. I think he's writing the next one, which is kind of weird. Like, why he's just randomly going to write one issue. Uh, and it's I find that funny because, because and it's totally in line with... he's missing. Yeah. So Zdarsky is technically missing. On the first issue of Crossover, they're yeah. like, Scott Snyder or someone awesome Snyder found, found dead in his apartment. Brian K. Vaughn. Yeah, Brian yeah. K. Vaughn. And then, like, uh, Chip Dodarski still missing, so it's yeah. going to play into that, I, I feel like. It probably will, yeah. So, <laughs> But, you know, not only is the writing good, but Ramon Perez is so fucking good. There was a book, oh, man, um, there was a book he did, and I'll throw it up, I'll find it. I'm, I'm not going to, like, spend time searching right now. Um, right. But he did a book with based on a Jim Henson script. And that was my first introduction to his work. And it's, mm. his art is just breathtaking. And it is breathtaking throughout here. I love the the coloring. I love that it's a little bit, it's a little bit muted. Um, and it's not like super, super bright. And I like, and that's like one of the things I, I really enjoy about this. Um, and even like when you have the flashbacks, like it gets a little bit like hazy. Mm. I don't know how else to describe it. It's a little bit hazy when you're like in the past. I just think that, this is, and it's unique. It's not like, it's a different type of story. I haven't seen this before. And I think that that's, that's what I really love. The, I would say that's what I love the most. It's the, the connections with the people. It's Daniel, who now learns his name is Tommy. He's learning that everything he thought about his life is not real. Now he's welcomed into the town, even though they don't let outsiders in normally. But since he's technically a child of Stillwater, they kind of, they're like, all right, well, so yeah, I'm excited to see where this goes next. Nope, I'm on mobile. I, you see me though? <laughs> yeah, I see you. Okay. So I'm just very excited to see where this series is going to go. I'm I'm probably going to have to wait for the trades because like I can't. I looked and I wanted to see if we had the singles at work, but since we didn't, I'm I'm not going to hunt them down. I'll just I'll just trade wait the series. But it is phenomenal. Uh, it's easy to see why this was nominated for an Iser. Which by the way, we forgot to mention. Um. You know, over the next few episodes, I think we're going to be picking stuff that uh, was Eisner nominated. Not necessarily have they won the Eisners, at least of the time we're recording them. But, we, you know, we picked out of some books and uh, it's easy to see why this book got nominated. Because writing, 10. Art, yeah. 10. Coloring, 10. Lettering, to everything about this book is a 10 to me. And, you know, one more thing and then I'll, I'll, I'll shoot it over to you. The <laughs> one thing I did find really fucking fucked up is like okay you can't like putting somebody in jail doesn't really mean anything right yeah. how do you punish yeah. somebody they yeah. fucking bury you alive they buried his mom for two fucking weeks in the dirt because she sent a letter to him to bring him there that's fucking that's horrific yeah. i can't like it's the worst you, shit ever not only are you being buried alive but you're not going to die while you're buried. you know. So you're going to be sitting there in dirt for two fucking weeks, unable to do anything. And I don't know that, that another aspect, like, I just think like he's very, his writing is very clever and his ideas are, are just, they're dope. I really, yeah. you know, can't say enough good about, about okay. this entire book. No, no, it's, it's, a, it's a great book. Uh, like I said, I agree with you wholeheartedly pretty much on everything you said. Uh, and I just have to commend, I just have to throw it up for Skybound real quick because this is a Skybound book. And 
talked about this, didn't we? Lot, yeah, like, last I, like a couple weeks. I don't know what episode we talk about it a lot, but we yeah. talked about how Skybound is relentlessly killing it. Robert Kirkman and company are relentlessly killing it. That whole squadron of Skybound friggin' diehards killing it. Like I, I can't. I, I, any, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much down for anything Skybound at this point. I know. I'm excited to talk Skybound X. We're gonna we're gonna yeah. read each one every week. We're we're reading those. I'm so I'm so hyped for that, and I don't I can't even like really explain why I'm so hyped. Other than like I, just everything Skybound puts out is pretty much a it's pretty much always gonna be something I enjoy. It's yeah. never not an enjoyable book, and I think that Robert Kirkman has really curated uh, the type of creators that he has over there and the type of books that they're putting out. Um, you know. Everyone I've read, I've really liked. I also haven't read every single one, but I mean, we you know we talked about excellence. That's probably like one of my number one books coming out. You know, yeah, top, firepower. Top, one of my number one books. Firepower. So I mean, dude, uh, come on. It, it just it's just like hit, 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 and bitter root. Like well, bitter roots. Oh, bitter roots proper, is regular image, right? Image proper, uh, but birthright, sick. Birthright was uh, dope. Yeah. Manifest destiny was sick. Yeah, dude. I mean, I just. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, Walking yeah. Dead, Invincible, like all, all of this, sh- all this stuff that they put out, quality. It's all quality content, and it's all fresh types of stories that we don't get anywhere else, really. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, all- I'm hoping, I'm hoping they do a firepower television series, so I could love it in real life. <laughs> like, it's you know, I, mean? I don't know. I, I feel like firepower would transfer well into a live action. I mean. I look. I felt that Outcast should have transferred well, and it did. It did. First season was pretty fucking decent. I thought it was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, that was another another Skybound book, right? Um, yeah. And I, I've been waiting for it to end because uh, I want to get those hardcovers. You know, I really <laughs> like that. It's a really good uh, horror book. Creepy as fuck. The art is great. Again, another hit. Like he just keeps fucking pumping these hits out, dude. And Stillwater. I'm so glad that Chip got the recognition with this book even yeah. though like t- like even though it's, it's weird to me it's like best new series best continuing series like i don't know how i the eisners like how they figure out what they should do like to me it should be best new series should only have one complete arc when nominated right if it's anything yeah. over six issues then it should be best continuing series that's just just my opinion. Yeah, I, I don't. Guess. I, their criteria, their criteria is weird. Like I've never actually, never actually looked it up. But sometimes I'll be like, oh, I'm surprised this isn't nominated, and then someone will be like, no, it'll be nominated ne- next year. So I don't know any of the exact criteria for like how Eisner's yeah. or how Eisner people figure out who's going to be nominated and what qualifies. But right. like, but we'll, we'll 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 I'm gonna look it up and we'll we'll talk about it in, the, in, the, in one of the coming episodes. But yeah. uh, as far as this goes, this ah. is one. This is one of okay. I have this weird obsession with the with the concept of immortality, right? The concept mm-hmm. of the, the physics and concept of immortality is I've always been like a really dope thing to me, right? What is it what is it like to be timeless? What is it like to not have to worry about death? And I feel like right off the bat, like the more and more we learn about the town and its people and how their little miracle works, uh Chisodarsky has really thought this out. Like right down like everything, everything within the town is immortal. Like he pulls a sh- a chuck of corn, uh, uh, ear of corn uh, off of uh, off of I don't even know of the stem. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, off the off its stem, and it, it re- immediately regenerates. And then the doctor is like, "Yeah, we don't even eat. We don't even necessarily have to eat. We just do because we like it." I'm like what? So like, wait. So you fools don't get drunk either. Like this is taking Wolverine, multiplying it by the amount of by, by the population of the townspeople, and getting more in depth. You know what I mean about about yeah. the whole immortality thing. So I feel like Chip Zdarsky on this is like really thought this out and really came with it clever and really thought about like you know, I'm, I'm, you know the, the comics Twitter to be like, eh, da, 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 that's not possible. What about this? What about that? Like I feel like Chip Zdarsky really sat there and thought about all these trolls and what and all the questions they're gonna ask and figured out how he's gonna approach it and make it clever and make it work. Like he's, he's dude, clever as fuck. Yeah, he's he, clever like, as fuck. Yeah, like you, you can tell, uh, Mr. Castro, my tenth grade English teacher. I know Mr. Castro. I know, I know Mr. Mr. Castro. I love Mr. I love Mr. Castro. Castro. I didn't never I had him. his class, but I would go sit in his class. Oh yeah, he's the best. So says, no, yeah. he's the best. I love Mr. Castro. But anyway, Mr. Castro, we love you. If you're watching, if you ever catch wind, well, yeah, we fucking love you. Yeah. Anyway, 
he told me one year, he's like, Dylan, I like you because you laugh at all my jokes. He's like, wait, that's, that's kind of narcissistic. Castro, what's going on? And I was like, no, 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 no. Let's hear me out. I'm like, all right, cool. You can tell a level's intelligence by their sense of humor. And I would laugh at his jokes because they're fucking funny. They're, albeit they're like old guy jokes, but they're fucking funny. And then he was like, and then he was like, let me ask you, like, who's your favorite uh, comedic uh, writer? I'm like, uh, Mel Brooks. He's like, see, that's why I love you. <laughs> like, yeah. And at the time it was Mel Brooks. It's different people now, but like, you know, I was, I, I anyway, oh yeah, I digress. But, and Chip Zdarsky ha- is very smart in his humor. Yeah. You know, he's edgy enough, but he never takes it too far. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I appreciate that. It transfers well into his writing, and it, and it transfers well, like his just just his level of uh, just his level of intelligence and understanding of people in general make mm-hmm. these characters either that much more that much more easy to hate or that much more easy to love. Because yeah. like I fucking hate Deputy Mike. <laughs> oh my god, I hate that guy! I fucking I, hate I, that guy. I know. I, I really I left the book like just like. Man, I want to beat the fuck out of him. Yeah, I want to This fool needs to just, this fool just needs to get the shit kicked out of him. That's what he that's needs. That's what like, good writing. Outside that's, of the borders, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, That and that's good writing. When you can, like, have that kind of, like, emotional feeling about a fictional character that you're reading, yeah. like, that's that's a sign of good writing. I want to I want to touch on the, uh, you know, the talking about the corn husk, right? Another thing I found fucking crazy was the cow. Like, oh. well, we can't. We're scared. We're scared to bring outside meat in here, and like so, they're working like, oh yeah, what would happen if they brought like dead meat or something dead in here, yeah. right? So, but what they do is they continuously cut meat off of these cows that they have, and they continuously grow back. So they're can they torture these animals, and their only existence is so that they can continue they. All the time, they're getting parts of their body cut off so that people can eat them. That's yeah. horrific, in and of itself. The concept of that, and and then going into what you talked about, like the characters. You know what I found really interesting as a you know recovering uh, alcoholic addict is the fact that people that would use alcohol to numb life, right, to kind of get by, like they can't use it anymore. So losing that crutch and having to just deal with deal with immortality now you're not even just dealing with life on life's terms you're dealing with the fact of who you are and there's you nothing it. and you gotta live with it forever so yeah. i thought that was a very like a uh, very interesting take that wasn't necessarily like a major focal point of what we were reading but that i something that i really attack um something that i really appreciated because like You know, that's what I used to do. I used to sell, it's called self-medicating, right? So I did that for years. I don't do it anymore, but like to imagine like if I was in that dark state, right? And I I can't get, I can't get high off the shit I'm doing. I can't get drunk off the shit I'm doing. And I can't, now I got to just deal with me with nothing. Like that's, so that just my mind just like, that's what I, and that's the thing the book did is I'm constantly, as I was reading, was going all on these uh, different tangents about stuff like kind of exploring it within my own mind and dude i'm telling you like i just i'm so glad we picked this book i'm so glad yeah because same i've same. been wanting to like, i've been wanting to read it i have it has been on my list to read not like on goodreads or anything um but i've just been thinking about it. i look at it all the time i'm like fuck i gotta read it and then <laughs> i'm glad the eisner's nominated it because that you know like that was kind of the catalyst that that pushed me over the edge so it's like, oh, damn, it is good. <laughs> well, no, not damn, it is good. But, like, you know, just because you had brought up, like, let's read some stuff that's uh, Eisner nominated. Fantastic idea. Like, uh, we didn't do it last year. Um, so, like, doing we it sure this didn't. year. We just, totally missed it. Yeah, so this year just, it felt right, you know. And, and even if these episodes come out after the winners are announced, like, I'm still down to talk about stuff that was Eisner nominated. It doesn't just yeah, need to be while. Eisner winners. You know, there's so a lot like, of good I mean, stuff on there, dude. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff on there. I think that this is a this is a, this shining, is a must read. It is a must read. It's a shining example of what how to do something new and fresh in comic books instead of seeing the same old tired stories just being repurposed or fucking you know switched up. Because I don't, I've never seen this story before. Maybe there is, 
but I haven't seen it. So I, I love it. I love the art and I love the writing. I think it's just like, it's a complete package. Yeah. Um, it, it's fantastic. Uh, it's, I think from the, from the nominations, I forget what category I pulled the uh, Stillwater from, but I feel like the nominations uh, that, that it was in that category was also like Jonathan Hickman, Ed Brubaker, um, Jeff Lemire. Like he's up there with some fucking heavy hitters, some like really deserving fucking writers. And he's fucking hold. I, I think he's holding his own. And it's our it's our lovely just a tip with Chip Zdarsky. Like he's he's fucking killing it, dude. I I I see great things for this for this dude, man. I see great things. I can't wait for cons to open back up because like I just want to meet the guy. I know, <laughs> Sam. I'm willing to fly to a different state. Yeah. To go see this motherfucker. So or we could Dylan- or, or or we could go to Emerald City Comic Con and just literally just go up to fucking Oregon. I that's Seattle. Oh, it's Seattle. But, oh, well, but, well, we passed but, Oregon. Yeah, but, I mean, I'm down. You let me know, and we'll get our press badges, and we'll fucking road trip, dude. Fucking I road trip. I need somebody to go with me, because I, I don't want to fly. I want to drive. I think it would yeah. be fun. Um, yeah. And you just just switch off. One solid drive, fucking one way, um, and, and it would save a lot of money on the flights. But, yeah, I, I would definitely go to a different state to go see him. Because, like, there's certain creators that just don't come to L.A. for whatever reason, and I get it. But Chip Zdarsky somebody that I I really want to meet in person. It's not somebody, like, even if I got to interview him via, like, Zoom or something, it, it still wouldn't be the same. Like, I want to meet him in person. I, like, Jason Aaron, I, I got to talk to him, but it's not the same. Like, I want to be able to see him. I know we there's no sh- handshaking anymore after the pandemic but give him dap uh, or something yeah you know just fucking be able to sit there and, and just chop it up real quick dude like it's cool to see chip zadarsky fucking reach this level of success and a acclaim, critical acclaim um it's such a early stage in his writing career yeah i mean i i, I don't know it's hard for me to like really like kind of dive in anymore into the book this i know this is kind of a quick and short uh review of it but I really don't – this is one of those times where I don't want to, like, spoil too much. I know I spoil stuff on, a, like, a weekly read, like, we, you know, when we do that stuff. But, like, when it's at this point, arc, at this wait, at, at this point, it's just safe to say, like, there will be spoilers and there may not be. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's just, like, with, with, and when we're talking about a graphic novel, like, a full arc of something, I feel like it's cool to, like, for us to give our, like, you know, hit the beats of certain moments that happen in the book. But, like, to really, like – enjoy like you have to experience this book you yeah. can't just I, I couldn't convey completely what the book is about um in terms of why i think it is so great other than writing art coloring lettering perfect you know that the concept is fucking awesome and i think everybody should pick it up there's a reason it got nominated and there's a reason why chip zadarsky is continuing to get project after project after project with not just his creator on stuff. Oh, I didn't even mention DC. Like yeah. the fucking Batman Red Hood story. The Red Hood yeah. story he's doing in Batman Urban Legends. I haven't liked Jason Todd that much ever. I have never liked that fucking character as much as I, I like I, him. I, I, I fucking hate Jason Todd. I mean, I didn't. Ha- I, look, he. I, I went back and read uh, uh, Under the Red Hood that Judd Winnick did when he yeah. was like first brought back. And I, I, it's a great story. It really is good. But Jason Todd is really unlikable in there. Even though... And that's not a bad thing because he, he's supposed to be unlikable in that arc. But, like, now the level of depth that Zdarsky brings to his characters, like, in that Urban Legend story, like, it's just, it's so good. And it's, even though it's an $8 book, like, I'll pick it up because of that story. That's how good it is, you know? And, again, like, his character work, uh, his like, concept, his his ideas are just... <laughs> so great dude you know shifts are actually so good that i want this fool to be my dm for dungeons and dragons like i feel like he'd be one of the craziest dungeon masters ever like he'd come up with like the dopest story ever like <laughs> i just i just pictured him like laying on a couch like this as oh, he's yeah. dming and he's just <laughs> roll for initiative yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you know uh I think we've we've dude we've said it so much on on multiple episodes how much we love chips at our and it was a foregone conclusion that we were both going to fucking give high praise to this book. So um, I hope you guys check it out. It's 
still it's a continuing series. Maybe if you picked up the first issue like myself and you didn't continue on, go fix that situation right now because it is such a good story and it's a testament to the writing when you can say that you've read it a second time and it gets better. You know, even though I only read the first issue twice, not the whole arc, it's it's great, dude. It's it's a really good and uh, I can't recommend it enough. Right. Yeah. So go pick it up. I mean, there's nothing else I could say uh, aside the aside from we love Chip and it's easy to see like he had his resume says it all. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I for more often than not I hear praises from his stuff. Like you know you get you get people like you got people who love Tom King. You got people who hate Tom King. You got people who love Scott Snyder. You got people who hate Scott Snyder. But the general consensus for Chip Zdarsky is he's generally loved by everybody. Generally, I, I mean, I don't know. I've never seen like, yeah, I've you know, never Tom seen Taylor, him. Yeah, uh, yeah. Tom, Ta- Tom Taylor will like sit there and repost negative comments. So will Zack Snyder. So will, like a bunch of other people. They'll repost like negative comments like people have said to him. But I'm not, I, I don't. To, to my recollection, I've never seen Chip ever do that. Yeah, I haven't either. Yeah. No, I mean he's he's. I think he's like universally loved. He's, he's yeah. it's hard not to. He's not an asshole. He's like you know what I mean. He's like on the way to becoming. Like, if he gets a little more zen in, in how he talks to people, he, he'll be comics equivalent of Keanu. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, and side note, I have to say, before we fucking end this conversation, it was announced today, Nick is off of Amazing Spider-Man as of September, next week, as of when we're recording. So I'm sure by the time this goes live, the announcement of who the new writer will be. But I'm, I, I just want to put this out into the universe. I really hope it's true. I really hope Chip Zdarsky. It's, kidding, it's Chip Zdarsky. I, it's Chip Zdarsky. What do you mean? I just feel like is he going to write Spider Man and Daredevil at the same time? Will he do that? I hope so. so. I feel like he's already done writing Daredevil. Like it's done. Like right, right. Like what? What, what issue are we at? 20, 30, 31? Where are we at? I think thirty. Thirty. Yeah. 30? Yeah. I think. I think. Uh, I, honestly, I think. Uh, I, from where it is right now, I feel like. We have like ten more issues. I don't know. I feel like it doesn't seem going up towards this conclusion. I don't know. We'll see. But either way, fucking Marvel. Give Chip Sadarsky Amazing Spider Man. He is the only person I can think of that is perfectly suited for that book. That's that's all I want to say. Uh Stillwater, ten out of ten. Go pick it up. And if you're not already following us, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the Comic Lounge. Uh, make sure you follow Dylan at the Dillbot on Instagram. Dillbot is dope on Twitter. And hit the like, follow, subscribe button so you're notified every time a new vid goes up. And on that note, we're out. Later, buds.